intro. All right. So um, the upperclassmen had the opportunity to meet Dorian Vallejo this morning. They were thrilled for, for the visit and he left them with lots to think about. So uh, Dorian is somebody I've known for a long time, not well, but I met you, I would say over 30 years ago, back in the day. And, uh, and then in the last few years, we, we got together again, we became friends, and I've been watching very closely what, what Dorian's up to. So um, Dorian is, is a lifelong artist. Uh, he set out from, from his early years to be a professional uh, uh, artist and illustrator. And so not long after graduating high school, he was already taking on professional work. And by the time he was 20 or 21, he was working as a full-time professional artist illustrator. And his, his medium was in um, the fantasy art realm. And he'll talk and, and show uh, examples of what he did. Uh, but along the way, he kind of took a new route. And so he'll let you see how he found his way to what he really wanted to be doing with his life. And, and he would tell you he never knew that at a younger age. So I think that's a first good lesson is that you don't have to know all the details of what you're going to do with your life. It's not until you actually start experiencing things, I believe, that you really know what you, you want to do with your life. But Dorian lives an artist's life. And so having him here to talk a little bit about what he does is, is a really valuable experience. And in specific, what we, what we thought to do is to feature how uh, he uses his sketchbook to, to move his ideas along and, um, and to actually have that as a major part of his artistic output. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. This is Dorian Vallejo and uh, take it away. Okay, so I did this presentation this morning, but it's probably uh, somewhat similar to what I'll do for you guys uh, this afternoon. I don't like to repeat myself, so um, we'll see if I can add something different to it. And uh, I mean, it'll take its general form that'll be similar because uh, that's my life, but, and my life as an artist and what I want to share with you, but um, we'll see what I can add to it that's not like an exact replica of this morning. So, um, uh, so this thing that I've put up here that I call um, sketchbook individuation, and then uh, subtitle is a process of coming to know yourself. So the whole trajectory of what I want to get across in, in this little talk, uh, my little presentation to you is, uh, I mean, so first of all, I'll share some of my work and my process, but I mean, I'm fully aware that like I've been in your position before and I'm still in that position now where you know some stranger comes into my life and I'm thinking, well, what do you have to share with me that's of any value at all? Um, and, and why shouldn't I just like go to another YouTube video or whatever? So um, I'm hoping that I can capture your attention and share something with you not only for the moment or uh, give you an assignment, um, but that you might be able to take with you for the rest of your life. So um, let's see if that's not uh, a compelling introduction. And um, so I'll jump to um, the assignment to start with so you know where we're going with this. And uh, initially when Roger and Lori and I spoke, I had uh, a bunch of ideas and I was thinking about ideas on how I could structure things for your sketchbook time that would um, develop you as an artist. And so I was thinking about like all the things that meant something to me. And uh, I was working out all of these ideas. Uh, well, you should do this and you should do that and you should do another thing. And this would be good too. And maybe another thing by the time I had the whole kitchen sink in there. Um, I was thinking, well, God, that's pretty overwhelming. And 
what do I know about you anyhow? And I don't, clearly. Um, so I took all of that and I threw it away and I decided the better path forward would be for me not to have any rules except for maybe one. And that is that um, you spend time with yourself every day for about 30 to 60 minutes. Now you could do it more, but it's probably better if you do it roughly around that time. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do more if you want to, fair enough. But the main idea here is consistency. And you wanna do 30 to 60 minutes, even if you're not feeling into it. Um, the whole idea is basically a commitment and the commitment that you make to yourself as human beings um, the older you get, you'll find that um, the questions that you have about the world and the mystery that it presents and what you should be doing with yourself anyhow and what's the meaning of life uh, are not questions that can be answered out there by any book or any person or anybody close to you uh, and even the closest people, but that it requires a commitment to yourself to and time spent with yourself. And that just doesn't come by accident. You, you have to do that on a regular basis. And that is sacred time. So you go into a room, you close the door, you turn off your phone, you set your timer, um, and, and, and you work diligently at that. Um, and then when the timer is up, you, you go on about your day and do the other things that you have to do. And so maybe you're halfway familiar with this because you do homework on a regular basis and, you know, maybe you have a TV show or you, you do something, but there's always some form of something distracting you. So what I'm suggesting um, is that you this time that you do for yourself is strictly yourself. If you have to um, go in the basement or go outside, it's getting warm enough to do so. If you have to wake up earlier, um, and, and so that it's, you have no distractions. If you have to go to the library, if you have to just be in some place, you know where it is that you have to go to be alone, um, do it and set that time so that it's on a timer. Um, and I like a timer because most of our life is timed anyhow, um, whether we like it or not. Um, and we wake up roughly around the same time. We have to be a class or a job or something at that time, same time. Catch a bus takes a certain amount of time. It's supposed to be there, uh, and then it's over. Uh, then you know you move from one thing to the next, and then your day comes to an end, and you do it all over again. And eventually, that's your life, and that's on a timer too, uh, right to the second. So ideally, what you're trying to do is figure out a pathway through life that makes sense to you, that uh, hopefully is a good pathway. Nobody wakes up wanting to wreck their lives or make bad in the world or make the world a worse place. But um, I won't say nobody, maybe some people do. Um, but I'm going to suggest that the better path forward uh, might be to utilize the gifts and the potential that you have as human beings so that you can make the most out of them as if uh, that was a moral imperative, as if that was a true right in the world that you should be doing. Um, and, you know, take that seriously. School takes you seriously as citizens, young citizens of the, of the world. Um, put you on a timer to take this class and the next class and the next class and then send you home to do homework. So uh, this sketchbook process of coming to know yourself, I'm going to suggest that you take it very seriously. Like it's a visual diary and you can write in there, you can draw in there, um, make it easy to do. That's my second little bullet point. Uh, don't make it all complicated where like it's such a big deal that you have, uh, it, it takes, you know, 20 minutes to set up um, just so you can get to it. Uh, I'll show you in a minute the stack of things that I have and, and 
my sketchbook, um, I'll, I'll show you that and how I try and make it easy to do. Um, and it's, it's better if you do something. So here I say it's better to do 30 minutes uh, every day instead of five hours at once. I'm going to also add that it's better to do something poorly than to uh, wait for your, the time that you're inspired, that you feel like you're into it, and, uh, and then dive in all at once and put your energy there and then be waiting again for the next moment uh, of inspiration because you just don't know when that is. And the part of being committed is to be able to do that consistently all the time, show up and, and um, you know, spend time with yourself and figure out how to manage yourself as a human being. Um, so this part of, of keeping your sketchbook will be uh, no rules from me. Um, just spend time, draw or paint or do something that you think uh, seems like it's important to you. If you're drawing, draw something. If you like drawing from your imagination, then do that. If the next day you feel like, oh, um, that idea that I had, that dream that I had, uh, that thing that I saw in the park, that beautiful person, uh, that movie, that character, um, whatever it is, uh, I feel like like drawing that from from memory, or I feel like like pulling that out, stopping the movie frame and copying that thing. That seemed like interesting. Or I see something in the corner and and I feel like drawing that. Whatever it is, it's not my suggestion. Allow whatever is inside you to. Uh, sing out and announce itself. Uh, just look out into the world, look into your mind, and and try to listen, and and then just start drawing something or painting something, something writing about something in your in your sketchbook. Um, and then lastly, try when you're doing that, try not to be um uh unobservant passenger of of what's going on why you're doing what like while you're doing what you're doing uh try and suggest some reason to yourself that this is why that thing seems like it's important and as you go through this little assignment but as you go through life that kind of internal dialogue uh asking yourself why something seems important, um, it's going to be very, very helpful. And you, you'll, you'll want to practice that. So that, as much as anything else, is, is um, my little um, invitation to you to uh, start you know, some process on a regular basis if you don't do it already. So anyhow, uh, without any further ado, that seems like a pretty long intro, uh, I'll get started. So here's a, a stack of books and uh, sketchbooks. And um, on the top is, is little folded pieces of paper. And so a sketchbook to me is anything where you can sort of make notes and do it in an easy way um, so that you have a range of possibilities of, of what you're going to put in there. If it's a quick little doodle, um, or, or something more finished, or writing notes, or anything. Um, these little ones that exist on the top of the pile uh, are just folded up computer paper, um, and, and um, slip it into my pocket, and off I go. And I have lots and lots and lots of these. So this, this set of sketches here, uh, this set of books here, only represents a very small fraction of sketchbooks that I that I have had in in you know it should be like that. My goodness, I've been doing this since I've been your age and younger. So um I have lots and lots and several books I've lost, and, you know, which has caused me some mental stress. Um but that's life too. So anyhow, um these are good things to have. Um uh, this this book here with this little um, blue pouch here 
is uh, what I was talking about when I said make it easy. In here are a um, set of tools, some, some pencils, some pens, some uh, whatever I need, some ink, um, so that within five seconds, maybe less, I can be drawing. I have these things um, really scattered in every, throughout the house. In every room of the house, including the bathroom, there's something for me to draw on and make notes on by the side of the bed, um, in the kitchen, in the living room, in the dining room, obviously in my studio. Um, and uh, there's just always notes in the car. This book down here with this little thing coming out, um, this was a book that I had in the car, you know, but there's always some way for me to to draw and make notes and think, um, you know, artistically. Um, so then these books here are um, sketchbooks in which I record ideas. They, they mostly catch a whole bunch of different things, ideas, observations, kind of what I'm suggesting that you do. I mean, most of these do too. Um, and, and then they, you know, um, ideas for paintings, ideas for drawings, um, maybe ideas for comic strips, um, just whatever. Sometimes I see things in the real world and I think, well, that's beautiful. I think I'll, I'll draw that. Um, and, and then down here um, are, are a selection of books that are specifically geared towards drawing what I would uh, title uh, personal drawings. So um, um, those personal drawings are all done from life. And I'll share those, I'll share some of those with you when, um, as, we, as we move along. So um, in addition to this is uh, life drawings that I do. And this probably represents, oh, uh, in total maybe. So like this little pile up here is from one day a week um, for, I don't know, several months. And, and so the same thing down here. And so, you know, maybe in, in total, all this paperwork represents, I don't know, maybe a month and a half of, of actual uh, time spent drawing. Um, so I, you know, I like to draw and I like to do what I'm telling you to do. I'm not just preaching about things that you should do that I don't actually do myself. Um, and, and this little pile of paper, uh, that's really loose drawings, um, are specifically geared towards developing one idea. So this might be a pile of drawings for one idea in particular. And I might stick with that idea for a while. Um, you know, but maybe this is looks somewhat like the size of a stack of 500 sheets of computer paper. And, and so, you know, like, and I do this on a fairly consistent basis, so. There you have like a sort of visual of, of what I do. And from that, I think what I'm gonna do is um, say how the sketchbooks kind of relate to everything that I do. So um, I don't illustrate anymore, but when I was a little bit older than you, uh, or basically when I was your age, that's all I thought about doing. Um, I wanted to, in some way do what my father was doing. He was an illustrator, is an illustrator. Um, and, and that was my full understanding of what art entailed and, and um, what it could entail and how I could be an artist. And uh, it's a, ex extremely myopic on my part, but like, what did I know? I was just a kid. And so, um, you know, that's what I wanted to be. And, but the sketchbooks all fed into that. And the reason why I'm spending some time on this, because I know our time isn't like indefinite today, I'll move along quickly, um, is, is that um, things change. When I was younger, really young, I knew I wanted to be an artist and I was passionate about it. Like I, that seemed to me uh, like the right way to be spending life. Um, be far better than going to a job 
uh, like many adults that I I thought that I saw. Um, I'm not sure because you know how how sure could any of us be, but it seemed like to me when I was younger that many adults went to a job that they didn't care about and they were being practical and to make money to you know do whatever, um, pay their bills and do it again the next day and wait until they retired to do something that they actually liked. And when I was very young, like really young, probably like seven or eight, uh, I thought that's a really bad idea. How about if you could actually do what you love to do and choose that from the beginning and then stick with that love and, and, um, make that your whole life's purpose because you know who knows when that's going to end anyhow so like go for what you love and make that work so anyhow i thought that i wanted to uh uh do illustration and um uh i didn't want to lose track of it when i was in art school uh the thing that became apparent to me is that a lot of my instructors that were teaching um so now i'm in college um, they actually had adopted that mindset of the adult where they were in their 50s and um, they actually didn't like being an artist. And when I asked them, what is it that they did that they really loved as artists, they their answer almost uniformly uh, was that they kind of forgot about that. They were idealistic about artwork when they were younger and then they lost that thread, they lost the connection. And if they had to think about it, they wouldn't even know what they would do now um, as, as an artist. They, they just get a, an assignment and they do the assignment and then they wait for the next assignment and they do that assignment. Then they wait for the next one. And, and I thought, oh my God, that sounds like a nightmare. And none of them, at 50 that were answering in that way, I kept their sketchbook and I thought like, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna lose track of what I love to do. And so this whole journey that I'll share with you that um, is related to the sketchbooks. It connects to the illustration and connects to my fine art, to my personal drawings. It also connects to like the portraits and my paintings and, and I practice in there and I draw in there and, and I, I explore things, I experiment, I write notes, and, and so on and on. So I'm going to start right from the beginning with, with my career and um, that's closer to you, and then I'll move through to the end. So I um, started as an illustrator. Like I said, I, that's what I wanted to do. And this is probably one of those early illustrations. Um, um, so, and and like I say, I wanted to to do, you know, Conan and um, uh, so this girl in the foreground uh, was actually my girlfriend. So, you know, not that much older than you. Um, and um, so that's a that's a book cover. And none of these are done uh, on the computer. The computer wasn't as powerful back then as it is now. And so I decided that like, you know, I wanted to share some of those details with you. Uh, this is all painted, and I loved doing this stuff. It was so much fun. Um, I built models for this creature. You know, I made some things up, but really I built this whole spaceship here, like you might build a model airplane. Um, but I made it, you know, a spaceship, and I set up the lighting, and I loved movies, and, and um, you know, I got to hire people that I love. This was, you know, this main character was my grandfather and the person in the background was my girlfriend's brother. Um, you know, every job had something fun and interesting in some way that if I engaged it fully, I could really, really learn from the process. And, and uh, so like, how do you make a metal dragon? Like, wow, um, fun. I never did it before, and and unlike other things, when you're doing it for yourself, it's where you can kind of give up. And there's, it's like I couldn't give up as as a professional. It had to be done, and it had to be done at a professional level. And and really, really enjoyed that. Um, an alien, 
you know, and uh, it's a close up. And it's the kind of thing I show these close ups in a way, and I'm not even sure if you can see this, but there's scales and there are highlights on each one of the scales, and there's sort of veins in these weird, like, shoulder thing. Um, it's meant to be like organic and wires and little attachments for the wires and stuff. And um, it's like none of that was actually going to appear on a book cover that was about, I don't know what, seven inches tall, nine inches tall, like, um, you know, kind of like the size of your hand. Um, so all this microscopic detail uh, was just in no way going to show up, like little veins in his head. It's I did it because I love to do it. And I designed these costumes. Um, you know, I'd worked this out in my sketchbook, the color schemes, the design of everything, sew it all together. Uh, it's just a whole lot of fun, you know, making these kinds of, of creatures. I'll share with you the process um, of, of drawing this thing, uh, working it out of my sketchbook uh, and, and how, you know, the different elements come together. But, uh, you know, including like spaceships, um, close up detail, just, you know, tiny little microscopic like um, spaceships. And here's another one for that same series. Uh, really, really small hundreds of little spaceships, you know, having a battle and doing things. You know, obviously a kid that grew up on the, the, the first series of Star Wars movies. Uh, that were better than what's out now, but um, made a huge impression on me and, and Colleen that I, I just think that was really what I wanted to do. Um, you know, and then I started getting back the results as book covers. And I don't know if this stands out to you in a way as, as being kind of weird, but to me, it did. This type bothered me. The cropping bothered me. Um, you know, like I would have more to the painting. I wouldn't cut a guy off there or there. Um, you know, my my name, I think it's, yeah, here it is. But in some of them, it's not. I'll share that with you. Um, there's an example of, you know, that cover I was telling you about with the detail. It's like, no way is that detail showing up. And it's bigger on your screen than the actual book cover. Um, this is the kind of thing that would make me lose sleep. Uh, this kind of bright green type. Uh, you can't really tell, but this lighting is because they embossed um, the cover to make it stand out like some kind of bling on the bookshelf. And uh, this thing here, this kind of strip across the center uh, and more embossing and then embossing my like painting and then actually flipping my painting in the opposite direction. Here's my name going backwards. It's a D and then my name. It's like that seriously was bothering me. And most of the adult professionals that had been in the field for a while, like laughed at me when, when I spoke of my distress to them. And, and they just told me, well, you know, <laughs> don't worry about that stuff. You'll get over it. And there was this kind of nonchalant um, uh, acceptance of, of how crappy life could be. And, and I thought, no way. I am not signing up for a crappy life. I want to do something that I feel is authentic and true and real. And I love what I'm doing. I'm not putting all this work into developing my skills so I can just laugh at the way it's treated and be okay with, with in, you know, things that I'm not okay with. That's not all right with me. Um, so um, that field turned eventually towards computers. I liked doing things with traditional work. And um, so I made a shift and I started doing portraits. Um, and, uh, you know, these portraits, unlike the illustrations, are large, you know, like very large. So life size in many cases. So, you know, that painting, this painting here might be you know, six or seven feet. I think it was planned to be like nine or 10 feet. Um, and then, you know, they just didn't have room. <laughs> so it came down and to a modest six or seven feet. Um, 
but you know, if you think about your assignments or even what I was doing, I and mean, I think about like for the book cover, it's seven or nine inches. Uh, six or seven feet is, you know, substantially more um, life size. Again, um, something about this started to strike me as authentic, as real. And like, that's a real person. You know, these are real people. Um, that's a real human being. That's not a superhero. That's a real human being. Um, so real girl, probably roughly your age. A uh, little bored, a little tired, like posing because um, her dad wants her to pose and, and I'm doing a painting of her. Um, you know, this is painting, you know, not from a photograph, like directly from life with somebody sitting there. Um, so, you know, this is a drawing of that kind too. So I, I would guess that you're somewhat familiar with drawing from life and the authenticity of this kind of thing where I'm not using the machine to uh, process life. I'm, it's no camera. It's just me and a human being, my eyes, my mind, my hand, and whatever comes out onto the piece of paper. And, and there it is, a uh, quick little drawing, maybe 20 minutes, a um, little longer, uh, but real, something real about the person. Uh, it's not, this is not a Colgate commercial, you know. It's it's not an ad for for a beer or or something else. This is um, like I'm figuring out a way to to be sincere and be authentic and relate to humanity in a way that seems honest and uh, draw people and uh, be honest about it. So like. That's a real human being. And I thought, my God, your profile. Like, I just have to draw your profile. My God, it's fantastic. Um, looks like a Roman gladiator, but living today. Um, so, and funny thing is, he's a very gentle guy who's so nice. Um, it's a real person. Um, and that aspect of reality sung out to me as, as something worth utilizing my talents and my gifts uh, and developing further in life. And um, so that's what I'm sort of suggesting that you, you do with this process of, of sketchbooking, that you just start doing it and ask yourself, what's honest? Like, what do I feel is honest? And when I was younger, I definitely thought robots and spaceships and, and that is really what I loved. As I started doing it, this is what came out. And, um, and now what I'm doing today is more fine art. Um, and so, I, you know, it's still related to people, but the process of what goes on in my sketchbook and my thoughts in real life has an element of, of, of experiment and exploration. And so, there's a combination of what I'm seeing and then a combination of, of ideas and trying to make ideas come out in, in visual poetry. And so, so that's an oil painting. And once again, there's nothing that I do that is computer related. Um, I love the computer. It's a great thing. But when I'm making my art, it's all done by hand. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll skip through some of these. Um, and you'll see that some of them, this I have some drawings for later on in my sketchbooks and I'll share with you. Um, you know, these are, the ideas kind of are all centered around a basic theme, but um, they're different. It's not like I'm repeating, it's not like I'm a landscape artist or um, whatever, painting the same landscape again and again and again. Not that I'm saying that's wrong, it just, not what my practice in my sketchbook and the way my mind works and the way it likes to explore things. Um, it's like I don't really have a favorite meal that I would eat every single day. Uh, I kind of change it up. I don't have a favorite TV program that I would watch or a favorite um, piece of music or a song that I would just listen to for the rest of my, you know, after a while, I kind of want to like listen to something different. And that's how 
you know, it happens with my artwork too and in my sketchbooks too. And um, so, you know, you can see when you're looking at my paintings and then um, with my drawings uh, that they will, there's this process of experimenting and, um, you know, engaging. This probably engages a little bit more of my interest you know, from early on and throughout life, I still collect comics and love them um, and watch anime and, you know, animated films and um, like science fiction fantasy. Um, but this might look a little bit more like my um, interest in comics is revealing itself and, and very different than, you know, like say that. Um, so, you know, that's another type of that interest in kind of pop culture and what's going on and Maybe that's that's slightly different, a little bit more what I would call like the poetry that life offers to us on a regular basis where I'm happening to see something and I think, oh my, look at that light. Look at this human being that I love uh, doing something that I see her do all the time. And it's just so beautiful and magical. And um, that seems like worthwhile uh, to to make a work of art from. Um, and, you know, likewise, in in this type of um, part of my work. So, um, moving along, um, we'll get to some of the sketchbook stuff now. And I'll begin again with, with a illustration, a sketchbook, and how I used it to address ideas for a job uh, that I might have gotten as an illustrator. Um, so there's that piece I showed you earlier with, with the alien. And this was a, uh, a commission that I got to do a book cover. And it had something to do with, with martial arts. And I mean, I, I took karate class when I was a kid. But like, what do I know actually about like samurai lifestyle or um, you know, and trying to make an alien at that time. And like, so generally what I started doing is uh, uh, amassing detail and reference material and, and just drawing it. I might watch a movie and uh, rent movies at that time um, and and pause the movie midway and in different fight scenes and try and see like what authentic samurais and people who really knew what they were doing, how they were moving. And these sketches are really just the tip of the iceberg. So uh, the same thing for aliens. Maybe I would start with, um, you know, some, some creatures that exist in the real world and then try to make them into an alien, try to, you know, get it so he can hold on to it, you know, something. Um, and you know, I would do lots of these and then try and put them on. I didn't put everything into this. Usually uh, I would do about 30 to 100 different ideas before settling on one. Um, and uh, that was suggested to me by a former teacher, not so much the number of 30 or 100, but more so the idea that your, your first idea is, is kind of lame kind of obvious and um, it's probably a good idea if you uh, explore it further. So that's what I did and the way I defined exploring it further would be to do at least 30 and um, for practical purposes stop it when I've explored it about a hundred times um, before I went like too crazy with my own uh, nature, you know, and, and detail oriented self. So, so some of these, uh, were happening. And then, um, while I was working on that, uh, I was dating, you know, a girl and, um, really in love. And I'd look over to the side and I'd think, goodness, that's so beautiful. Now that's a pretty terrible little drawing here. Um, so it's funny for me to be saying like, oh, that's so beautiful. Um, but like, that's what love does. Um, and, 
and you just it was the first time I started drawing something where it was related to a human being that I knew and I wasn't using any special effects or aliens or spaceships or laser nothing like cool um, and something real in the real world that uh, using my no cameras, no tricks. It was just my eyes and my little lack of skill uh, or skill, whatever it was at that time, uh, to look out and, and try and sketch something that meant something to me about a person that really, really, really meant something to me. Um, and my love for art and my love for this human being and, and everything coming together. Um, the commitment that I made to being an artist. And so, you know, that was happening alongside like these. And, and I would recommit myself, finish the project. Um, and then I'd see, you know, like this type on it and and it would, I'd lose sleep. And it would, this is not particularly bad type, but you know, like they cut off his arm and, and this has a sense of space and, uh, they moved it up and there's my name cut off at the bottom and it's like, okay, I'm not even getting credit. I'm not even getting like my full image on the thing as I designed it after all those hundreds of drawings. Um, like something's not right about this and I need to do something different. Um, but of course I got another job and, and I loved it and it was a spaceship and, and like, you know, whatever it was. Uh, and I kept doing like drawings for it. And I was like, okay, let's acquire uh, some reference and, you know, get this into your mental library, you know, and then that's happening again. And, and I'm only showing you the tip of the iceberg. This was happening like every day. Like I draw for a little bit and then, you know, maybe I do little cartoons, um, but, you know, uh, then I get back to work again, you know, and, and, then that would happen again. And so, you know, then I decided, okay, I, I should probably take this a little bit more seriously. Um, so she would pose for me when she was awake a little, you know, a little bit more diligently. Um, and then sort of probably, it's, I'm not showing you this actually, cause it's, I think it's a good drawing in some ways. I think it's really not very good and certainly not very flattering. Uh, and, and the reason why it's unfinished is, very likely because she took a look at it and said, oh, you're not drawing that anymore. <laughs> like, that's not very good at all. Um, you know, but uh, these kinds of things, even when she wasn't posing, if she was just talking with a friend of hers that, that was pregnant, um, something that was happening in the real world, uh, you know, and, and she just had a baby, you know, and, um, and, and, you know, this one's pregnant and I'm thinking like, she's taking her, you know, sock off and that's, that's so real. That's not posed. That's not to sell a product. That's not, uh, and even, you know, nothing wrong with selling a product. Like, I don't mind any of that, but um, it's, it's sometimes I didn't agree with what I was being asked to do as an illustrator. And so, um, you know, this, 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 thing seemed much more honest to me. So I'm gonna speed through like some of these uh, sketchbooks that I said kind of catch all where I explore and practice and then the personal stuff. Um, these drawings are that small type of drawing at the very top of the pile. Um, they're not meant to be good. They're meant to, to capture things that I see out in the world, um, uh, the way people relate, quickly. Uh, here's a selection of them. Again, it's, it's not meant to be good at all. It's, it's just quick, quick notations. Um, this is uh, my girlfriend and, and her mother. Um, and like Roger was saying earlier, if somebody had uh, told me when I was your age that I would find this kind of thing more interesting than heroes and swords and sorcery and spaceships and science fiction. I always said, you're out of your mind. And um, no way. 
And in fact, I think I might even have had a conversation of that of that nature. It just didn't seem interesting to me. But what ended up happening is that the as I was doing it, the insincerity of the people working there, the way my work was treated, what I was asked to do, I came to uh, understand more about the way that field worked, and I I disliked it more. And as I started to really love another human being and the world more, um, this kind of thing seemed more honest to me than my earlier interests. And so I started pursuing it in my sketchbook. Um, this is a sketchbook that I keep in the car. Um, I, uh, it's long since finished. I always keep sketchbooks in the car. Um, and, and the, the intention is so that with that sketchbook, I see things out in the world and I draw from memory. Um, so, you know, this is a obviously like I saw a person walking and some kind of uh, attempt at drawing dogs or whatever I thought I was doing there. Um, so there's a friend that was posing for me that on one of the breaks was drawing with her, uh, playing with her cat. And later on, I thought like, I'm gonna see if I can remember like what that looked like. And they're not meant to be good drawings. They're they're meant uh, for memory. Um, this is another type of thing. Like I'm driving by, and I see these two kids, you know, with their bicycle. They're stopped, and I don't know if they're playing or looking at something or what. But as I'm moving through the world, uh, driving or like everything's like passing us by, and some things catch my attention, and and. I can't note everything, but maybe I can note something. And even if it's quickly and not fully rendered, uh, the gesture is kind of what captures the, so I could take this and uh, make it into a fully fledged painting, but the gesture capturing it as quickly and immediately as I can is kind of what's important. And maybe you'll find something like that important when you're, you're doing, you know, your work in your sketchbook. So um, I'm at a party, people are chatting, you know, uh, memory drawing of, of my girlfriend, you know, dressing and leaving and checking her pocketbook and somebody online at, at the supermarket, uh, just from memory, you know, I just thought that was kind of an interesting character. Um, you know, here's a, a mother walking with her child and then she, you know, takes a jump and it's raining, you know, and they take a jump into the puddle. Uh, I'm like, I don't have a camera with me. I couldn't have like planned for that. What I'm relying on here is, is my memory to kind of allow me to put something on the page that in some way relates to the, the kind of sparkle of magic that I saw in the, in the world that I think maybe even in my sketch pad is in some small way worth noting. And, you know, maybe there's a, another bad attempt at, at some dog. Um, uh, you know, my, my interest in comics and observation and imagination, these drawings are uh, also from my head, but, you know, you can start to see some things like overlapping. Um, so, yeah, there's you know another type of that thing in my sketchbooks. I'm developing ideas for drawings and uh, lots of notes that go alongside that. Sometimes they're reflections on on my own interests. Um, this type of drawing is is a more developed drawing than what I was showing you in my scar uh, my my car sketchbook, where I'm seeing something in the real world and then trying to remember it. This is my girlfriend, Kelly, putting on some sneakers, uh, getting set to go to the gym and exercise. And like, that's totally not like something that would go on a book cover. Like, there's just no way. Um, and and yet to me, it's seeming like I'm, I'm trying to do something here. Like that, that was a little bit of magic in the world. And then I have ideas that I'm working through, notes and, you know, like developing kind of obsessively about like 
trying to work out different color schemes, different patterns, you know, and um, this is related to that image I showed you earlier. Uh, and really, all of this is really just the tip of the iceberg. In every sketchbook, um, Kelly makes an appearance. Um, and, you know, here, but now it's with conscious intention. It's no accident. I know what I'm doing, like, deliberately. This is not just, like, I'm working on a project and then I think, oh, look at that. That seems, like, worthwhile drawing. Now I'm, like, consciously looking out into the world and looking at the human being that I spend time with, that I love, uh, that is the most important person in the world to me. Um, and we wake up in the morning and we're chatting and I'm thinking this kind of thing that I'm doing uh, with art materials and in relationship to, you know, um, is definitely worth making art. And I'm not questioning it anymore. Like I, like when I was younger and those earlier drawings, I was like, what's going on here? Um, now I know. And, you know, so there are sketchbooks on the bottom of that pile that are specifically, the entire sketchbook has nothing else but drawings devoted to this person. Um, you know, so um, there's an ethic associated with that, that here's a human being that feels safe, safe enough to fall asleep in my company um, and, and does moves around in such a beautiful way that I can, I look there and think this is worth making art from. Like, look at this. Um, this is a conversation I'm having with myself. And what I would suggest that you have like with yourself when you're working through your sketchbooks, like, develop something and then, you know, maybe think that's worth making art from. Like, I'm going to try that. And and so this is sort of like my little journey of, of doing that. Uh, here she's waking up and, and looking at me and, you know, uh, experiment and try different things. And a lot of my whole process is a process of experimentation. And then I take it further. Um, and you know, uh, really take it further. And these are where I do drawings in what I call collector's editions, which is a book that has a selection of my drawings. And I do what I would do in the first one or two pages as a collector's edition if somebody wants to buy it, but I do what I would do in my sketchbook. And uh, now it's like more developed and, and you know, more serious, but it, it still has these overlapping interests in comics, in reality, in observation, um, in love, and the poetry of life, what life is offering. This is my girlfriend's an artist too, and, and when she works, uh, she's often doing things in such a, a way that is so different than the way I do things. I look out, I look across the room, and I think, wow, that's really, it's really spectacular. Like I need to do something. Like I need to make a work of art. Like this human being is, is, is magical. So, you know, uh, this is a, a friend of mine, and she was posing for me. And um, on the break, uh, she took a pose, and it's that particular thing that's a consistent theme in in my work in this kind of thing where somebody's not actually deliberately taking a pose like they would for the book cover stuff where like it was clear what people, you know, like they had to pose to fit into that space. Um, this is all happening uh, with me trying to pay attention to what life is offering. Um, so there's something related to that earlier imaginary drawing and, um, and it's all starting to like come together you know, or memory drawing, you know, like um, these kinds of drawings relate to obviously what I'm seeing in the world, but has all of those things overlapping. So, um, so um, 
Now, I, I mentioned earlier that I uh, occasionally also do cartoons, and, and I think that maybe many of you do, or you appreciate cartoons or whatever. So, like, you know, something that I've done my whole life, um, and uh, I've seen other artists do. You sort of make little cartoons and you share them between each other. And, um, you know, before we do that, actually, I'm going to share a process video of of one of those collector's edition drawings and it's very quick. So um, I'll just share that and um, you know, you'll see how one of those gets done. So, um, okay. So let's see now, uh, now I'll, I'll share since I'm going to try and share something different than what I shared earlier. Um, um, this might be like one of those, uh, these drawings that I do in my sketch, in my sketchbook. Um, it's, it's, uh, and what I do is I film it. So I do this drawing and, and I'll show you the next one too. Um, and then I, you know, my girlfriend sometimes has, has traveled, um, for her work. Um, for, she works sometimes for the Museum of Natural History in New York, and they send her around the world. And sometimes we go together and sometimes she goes and I stay here. And in any case, you know, sometimes we're, we're not in each other's company, but we've done a lot of things like traveled around the world. And, and uh, so I'll make a cartoon and then I'll send it to her. And, and this is how I, uh, you know, it's like a little love poem or something, but it's visual. And so here's a little memory of us outside um, in the park eating something. Um, and uh, here's a little, another one here. Um, let's make that full screen. And um, this sort of shows us like, uh, you know, maybe cooking together or we're on location somewhere in a hotel and that's how we're watching a little movie as we're eating and um you know she gets maybe a little bit tired and and we're getting a little sleepy and you know sometimes that's all you need in life so that's my presentation for you guys um i will uh give it over to 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 you guys now to to ask some questions um roger are you there i am here and thanks so much dorian for uh, a brilliant presentation um so what i wanted to offer up to everybody here is uh go into the chat and and uh let us know if you have questions that you'd want to ask of of dorian and there's time now that we can devote to um, discussing the things that you're interested in hearing about. Okay, so uh, I'll just look to see if I missed anything along the way. Okay, so I'm going to start um, with this question, um, asking what material is your favorite to work with? Um. Okay, who, who's asking that? It says humane. Okay, well, not that it matters, but hello, humane. Um, and, and um, okay, so this has been an idea that I've had since I've been your age. Um, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And um, to, if I have a favorite medium uh, or material, that would mean I do that better than I do other things. And I don't like the other things because I'm not that good at it. And actually, um, if I did things uh, trying to express myself with the same medium every time, then it's likely that all the work would start to look the same. And so I consciously make an effort to, to change things up Sometimes I'll draw with pencil, sometimes I'll paint, sometimes I'll use oil paint and acrylic paint, sometimes I'll use collage, sometimes, 
you know, I mix everything together. Um, and so, you know, an answer to that, like, I love it all. My favorite thing is really just being creative and, and trying to be creative in a way that, that looks at, at whatever a pen, potential uh, weaknesses I have and, and says, well, that's something you should work on. That's the thing right there that's not so good. Get to work fixing that so you can express yourself even better. Um, okay. How's that? Yeah, I like okay. that. Uh, so Sammy has a question. So why don't you unmute and fire away? Hi, um, I have a question. Obviously, we know you have a lot of sketchbooks, but when you have these sketchbooks, do you separate them by like category? Like, do you have like a sketchbook for professional work, a sketchbook for personal work, or you just kind of all accumulate it in one sketchbook? That's a good question, Sammy. Um, the only one that I really okay. So I like. Let me just say that broadly, I have three separate categories, and so. Uh, now, in answer to your professional work, um, uh, let me talk about that first, is, is um, I don't do any illustration work anymore. So that kind of commissioned work and that stuff that, that I was showing you in the beginning, uh, now what I do is I, I pretty much just do what I want to do and then put it out into the world and you know hope that I've done it in such a way that somebody feels like purchasing it. So that might be considered the professional work. And that's the sketchbook that I, um, those category of sketchbooks kind of catches everything. It catches memory, it catches um, personal stuff, and, and then ideas for paintings and drawings that I would consider uh, would go in a gallery or that could, I, you know, somebody would see it like when I'm posting on Instagram and they would contact me and, and they would want to purchase it. Um, the other two categories are um, the, the 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 smaller sketchbooks that I, I just take with me everywhere, and you know those smaller sketchbooks they they also capture a whole lot of different everything notes and ideas and little comic book ideas and and ideas for paintings and um, you know just little random thoughts I have about like some epiphany that I've had that, that I think is just so brilliant, I need to write it down um, before I forget it. And, you know, I'm making fun of myself, but I suggest that you do that too, because we're thinking creatures. Um, and, and every once in a while, you have some idea that strikes you as profound, um, even if somebody else thinks it's like dumb, whatever, but it's your personal sketchbook and like right away. And so like those two sketchbooks carry a bunch of things. The only sketchbook that I would say that's that's strictly categorized now is the sketchbook that, like I said, is my personal sketchbook. And, and that one is, um, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of separate sheets of paper. Um, and I thought, you know, it might be a good idea to start putting them into books specifically. And so I have books specifically of the drawings that I do, like of Kelly, uh, who's my girlfriend, and and it's just an entire book devoted to her, and many, many, many of them. <laughs> like, So, okay, does that answer your question? Yes, it does, thank you very much. Cool, thanks, Sammy, that was a good question. Okay, I'm going to combine two questions because they cover some similar territory. So one is from Jay and the other is from Nick. And so why do you draw so many women in their beds? And the other question is, why do you draw so many children? Oh, that's so interesting. Uh, okay, so women in their beds. So that, that women in their bed theme, um, uh, that's such a good question and um, so first I'm gonna say um, the earlier part of my work when I was younger, like had a lot to do with very, let's just call it like uh, masculine themes, you know, heroes and villains and monsters and spaceships and this kind of thing, um, you know, dragons and wizards and warlocks and whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, like since I was falling in love with, a girl, um, 
And what seemed most honest to me was my relationship to women. That seemed to me, um, you know, and that woman in particular, and now this woman in particular, um, that seems to me like the most honest way of me making artwork. And the sleeping thing, that's, a, uh, that's such a good part of your question. And um, let me see if I can answer that like in some way that doesn't take me like the rest of my life. Um, so we'll obviously run out of time. So when somebody decides that they feel comfortable enough to sleep next to you, to live with you, it's by choice, by their own choice, and there they are, you know, you know, all things going along in the way they might go. Maybe one day you'll be a parent and you'll have kids of your own and and you'll look down and you'll think, oh my God, look at this little angel that is comfortable and and I'm responsible for taking this thing and taking care of this thing and and working and and putting food into the mouth of this little angelic creature. Uh and what an awesome responsibility. And for me as an artist, I kind of feel like that too, in relationship to um, um, the, the person who has agreed to love me in return and spend the minutes and the seconds and the hours, days, months, years of their life committed to me. And, and, uh, and then there they are asleep. Uh, where are they? Like, where do we go when we're asleep? And, and some of my fine art paintings have a kind of dreamlike imagery because that interests me, you know, in general. And it's part of that whole sketchbook thing is what's going on in our unconscious uh, that's motivating our conscious life. So that's kind of a long answer. And hopefully some of it made sense. Um, um, you know, but dreams interest me and, and how it affects us in the real world. And, you know, when somebody's sleeping that they're vulnerable, completely vulnerable and trusting and often to this dream well realm they are. And, and, and it's so wonderful and beautiful. It seems like something worth making art of. And so, you know, that selection of drawings is the personal drawings that I've decided to share with you here in this limited time. You know, there are other drawings that I have on my website that aren't sleeping, but they're, you know, they're also different types of, of what I consider uh, poetry that life has to offer. So the second part of that question is children. Why I draw so many children? Um, that's really interesting and a great question too. So when I started doing portraits, um, I was thinking, you know, part of the reason why I like traditional media is that it's related to a kind of history of art and, and why I chose portraiture is because some of that work really inspired me. Um, you know, you've probably heard of the old masters and that kind of thing. And, um, and some of these portrait painters, um, you know, I, I thought were wonderful. And so I thought, yeah, that's, that would be really a worthwhile thing like painting. And so if you go to museums, you don't really see too many children. You see a lot of, you know, um, adults that have their portraits painted. Um, but as it turns out today, um, most adults don't like having their portrait painted, but would rather have portraits painted or drawn um, of their children. So <laughs> that's an answer to your question, you know, and, and maybe even Sammy's too, like about the professional work, you know, like the portraits, um, uh, that end of things, it's like, well, you know, you get an assignment and you do what people ask you to do. And so like I get a portrait and I love people and all kinds of people, like I would readily and happily draw uh, someone you know, or paint someone who is older, and I have done that too. It's just that the majority of people um, I've been asked to do, you know, portraits of are younger people. So here it is. That's my answer. 
that kind of segues into our next question. This one's from Jenna. Uh, she says, by the way, you're awesome. And Yay. thanks, Jenna. Her question is, um, how much art do you think you've sold so far? And the second question is, how much do you make? Oh, Jenna, fantastic. Oh my God, I love that question. And because it's so direct and and it's important. And so, um, uh, so how much art have I sold so far? Um, all right, so I'm gonna answer this question uh, and, and then I'm gonna get specific. Uh, and then, I, well, maybe in between getting specific, uh, I'll tell you a little story. Um, I don't know how much art I've sold thus far. Um, uh, I've sold enough so that I'm not dead. I'm still living. I haven't sold enough so that I'm a multimillionaire. Uh, some artists are multimillionaires. I haven't quite figured that thing out yet. Not that I don't want to. It sure would be nice. I'm sure everybody, most people would agree, it would be pretty sweet to sell your art. And if you're asking that question, you know, um, maybe you might agree too that making millions might be nice. Um, well, I haven't done it. And if I did, I, you know, uh, I would tell you. So I'll just tell you how I've done what I've done. Um, all right, here's the story, and then I'll get to the numbers. Uh, when I was doing illustration, uh, I would get an assignment. And I would get paid um, on the average. Let's say I'd get paid uh, two thousand uh, dollars. Maybe it would sometimes it'd be twenty five hundred, two thousand five hundred dollars. Um, and then you know at, at, that's when I first started. And at the end of doing illustration, sometimes I get illustrations for five thousand um, dollars. That was kind of rare. Um, give you an idea of how lame the illustration field is now. Um, it's about 30 years later, and uh, that field pays roughly the same. Not like the cost of living hasn't gone up, because um, it has, but um, the price an artist gets for an illustration is kind of about the same. Roughly between 2,000 and 5,000, maybe 6,000. Um, and, um, but the majority of the bulk of them taking like maybe around 3000. Um, okay. So, uh, and it depends what genre you were like when I was illustrating. So let's see if I can tie this up without getting too long winded. Um, you know, science fiction was considered, uh, the next thing after like young adult kids books that paid the least, uh, those started paying like maybe 1700 you know 1500 uh maybe a comic book covered paid about a thousand or 1200 or close to two thousand so um any case i'm going to tell this story so now you have an idea of some of those numbers um i was in school when i started working my girlfriend at the time was two years earlier than me um she uh you know, so I, I went back and I would sit in on classes with her and and uh, I was already, you know, doing professional work. So, you know, yay for me, big man on campus, but like I wasn't uh, sprouting it, but I was probably pretty proud of myself. Um, more proud than I had a right to be, that might be a good way of putting it. Um, any case, she was kind of proud of me and we were sitting in class and watching this and I had just finished off an illustration. Actually, it was the one with those, all those guys um, uh, looking like like tough army men or whatever, space army men. And um, and the art director liked it so much that he gave me five hundred dollars more. Now, to put things in perspective. That might even seem like a lot to you. It, it seemed reasonable at the time, but not really, because let's say if it was $2,000 and my rent uh, was like, you know, $1,500 and, you know, I had my girlfriend and she wasn't really working, she was going to school and I had to put, you know, pay for utilities and buy food. And an illustration took me about all month. At the end of the month, uh, 
there was more expenses than there were money. <laughs> so uh, that wasn't doing so well. But this one particular month, you know, I finished this painting. The art director liked it. And so I got an extra $500. And I thought, yay for me. Like, what am I going to do with my big 500? Maybe I'll take my sweet girlfriend out for a lovely meal. And I'm feeling quite proud of myself. And so we're sitting in class. And um, uh, there was a presenter, much like, you know, I'm doing for you now. And um, uh, except it was like in the real world, it wasn't virtual. And um, so there's this guy up there and, and he's showing slides of his work and someone just like yourself. He was he was a um, portrait painter. And, and uh, so someone just like yourself says, so, um, you know, he's showing portrait after portrait and he stops on this painting that's like a painting of the, the Johnson and Johnson family, like from shampoo. And he says, um, this painting took me an entire year to do. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, there's five people in the painting. There is a dog and, and a horse and some trees in the background. And like, I did this painting, my painting in like two weeks. Like what was taking him so long? A whole, a whole year for God's sakes. So I guess somebody else like yourself was thinking like the same thing. And it's like, well, a whole year for one painting, like Jesus. How much did you get paid for that thing? So I'm real happy with my little $500 because now I have $2,500. I'm like, wow, for me. And he says, well, I got paid about $150,000 for it. And I looked at my girlfriend and I thought, well, um, I'm kind of getting disillusioned with illustration. It's moving towards computers. I like painting people. And she liked, you know, painting people. And we both thought, like, that's a much better idea. So um, I can tell you I've never gotten paid um, 150000 for a painting. But um, gotten about a third of that for a single painting. And um, that's pretty reasonable. And it's happened more than once. Um, and now that's probably the high end of things. And, and on some of those drawings that are on my website, you know, they can kind of fluctuate um, between like uh, 1,000 to like 7,000, 8,000. Uh, some of those quicker portrait drawings that you saw, those might take place in about 20 minutes and those might be $200. Um, so, you know, roughly around Christmas time, um, you know, that's that's a good price range for people. Um, and I can do a lot of them in one day. And so, you know, they're done very quickly, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, um, you know, so how's that for some straightforward answer? That's an awesome answer. All right. And thank you for being so forward with that, because I think a lot of people with big egos would, would have difficulty with that. So thank you. Oh, yeah, uh, the money thing. You know, the money thing is definitely like, look, you know, yeah, it's awkward for people. And, and but like we're all human beings and, and especially us here, like on this chat, you know, we have aspirations to be an artist. But, you know, you got to figure out, like, if it's even a possibility and, like, even real, uh, other than just making pretty pictures. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't even consider that I'm, like, a super successful, um, financially successful artist. There are people that make millions of dollars with their art. Um, and... That's exciting. It's real possible. There are people that fail <laughs> badly, and um, that's also very, very possible. So you know, I think you're asking a great, great question, and that's practical. And and you should ask other artists and see how honest people are with you. So I've been as honest as I can, and I think that's important. So all right, great. So I'm going to combine two questions again. So one's from Sammy and the other's from Bella. So okay. Sammy asks, how many sketchbooks do you say you have overall? <laughs> and Bella 
says, I'm wondering since you draw constantly, uh, what types of sketchbooks do you buy and what kind of paper do you favor? Oh, okay. Um, those are very, those are, uh, okay, they're great questions. They're fun, you know. So um, I'm not counting the sketchbooks that I do. It's like to say, um, well, um, it's a similar thing to me if I say to you, um, how many uh, thoughts do you think that you've had in the last, well, since you've been born? It's like, there's no way to answer that question. Um, I, you know, so sketchbooks, um, I, I engage this sketchbook in a way that I'm suggesting you should engage it. And, and that is, um, as an honest way of having a conversation with yourself on a committed regular basis. And um, if that produces, um, you know, that will produce over time many, 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 um, you know, a sketchbook is a visual diary. So, you know, like it'll produce many volumes. I have whole boxes downstairs, whole shelves filled with sketchbooks. Um, and, uh, sometimes, uh, like I said earlier, I've lost some sketchbooks cause I've been traveling and, um, absent minded professor that I am, um, I'm drawing something. I put, I put down my sketchbook, I leave, uh, I get interested in something else. And then, you know, buy, you know, buy, buy sketchbook. Um, and you know, on occasion, I'm lucky that it's come back to me, but more often it's just disappeared. Um, I can't know how many that I've done. Um, the other part of the, the question was, sorry, can you please repeat the other part? Or you prefer a, a, a brand or a type of sketchbook? Oh, that, that's right, the brand or the sketchbook. So yeah, well, like you saw in that pile of, of, of drawings. Um, okay, I'm gonna, Start by saying one thing, or maybe I'm just gonna switch it, but well, let's just start by saying that thing and then I'm gonna tell you what I think is actually the way I do things. So what I was gonna say, and which is pretty much the case, is I, I purchase sketchbooks that will allow me to do whatever it is I want to do. Um, and if I like something, I'll get it again. Um, I'm experimenting, I'm not, tied down to any one particular sketchbook or any one particular medium or any one particular anything. Um, uh, the only thing that I, I'm deliberately tied down to is attempting to be honest and optimistic. I, I really have had my fill uh, with negativity and uh, in the world. And so I feel like, all right, part of my commitment will try and be uh, to put beauty into the world and and, uh, and do it in a way that doesn't come off as corny. And it turns out that's pretty darn hard, at least for me. Um, and, and the paper thing, so, you know, so I'm experimenting, I'll try different things and try different pads. It's, it's not like that one's better than the other. Now that I've said that, uh, there is, some paper that, uh, now all papers aren't created equally. Um, you'll find that if you draw on one piece of paper, your pencil or your charcoal or your ink will glide over it smoothly. And on other paper, it doesn't do what you like or vice versa, something, some texture works for you that the smoothness of a paper doesn't work. And, and so you figure that out over time. Um, the last part of my answer to that is I try and find materials that are archival materials, meaning that uh, I think my life is worthwhile and my time is worthwhile. Uh, that might sound like an over-exaggerated claim, uh, but I think that if any of us had somebody with their hands around their throat squeezing, we would all fight with everything we have uh, uh, to get it off so we could have a little bit more life. 
And so in that way, the materials that I choose are archival materials, meaning that they're meant to last. If I think some of my life's energy uh, is worth giving up the seconds and the minutes of my life to put it onto a piece of paper, uh, I don't want it to disintegrate or fade when it's exposed to light. So those kinds of materials are not considered archival. Uh, a ballpoint pen might be a good example of that, like a Bic pen is a perfect example of that. Um, you do something with a Bic pen, and if you put it in a window uh, in a month, it will have faded to um, be completely transparent. You write your name. Uh, so here's a little experiment for you. Write your name, uh, put it in a south-facing window, and uh, keep it there for a month, and you'll see that it'll be, if not completely gone, almost completely gone. In three months, it will be completely gone. I don't like that with my materials or my paper. Um, so I choose things that are gonna last uh, longer than me. That's my answer. Thank you for that. So I have two more questions and we only have about seven minutes to finish up, but uh, Great. I Great. really appreciate, and I know we all appreciate uh, having you here with us today and you are so inspirational and many people uh, we're saying in the chat how how inspirational you are to them. Oh, good, good. So, so here's one from Zach, and he says, "Is there something you do when you don't know how, uh, or when you don't know what to draw?" For me personally, motivation is my biggest issue, and I'm indecisive with what I should draw. How would you counter that? Oh, Zach, that's such. Oh my God, if I could be there, like, oh, what a great, great question. That's really wonderful. Um, okay, so this relates to a practice that I have, and, and I'll suggest that, that you have, uh, that maybe you adopt too, and maybe other people that have questions of this nature adopt as well. And um, that is, when I was, so when I was younger, you know, there were so many different things that, that, announced themselves to me that seemed like they were worthwhile drawing, you know, like I say, robots and, you know, heroes and, and just getting better, you know, because I was just awful. Um, like I'd do something and one eye looked like it was in the middle of the face and the other eye was like on the top of the head and it couldn't get the nose and the mouth to work. So just practicing, like, seemed like it was worthwhile. And then I'd get the head proper and you know, the arm would look like it wasn't attached and then it's just a wreck in the anatomy. Like, so all of that seemed like something. Uh, so the first part of that is, um, you know what your weaknesses are in terms of your technical skills. So, um, you know, if you don't have some grand noble idea that seems like it could be your masterpiece, just work on your skills. You know, and maybe make a, a regular practice of working on your skills. Get better at the thing that you know you're not so good at. Because again, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Uh, the second part of, of what I do and what I started doing diligently uh, was serious like commitment. Shortly, you know, maybe, well, that's not true. I was gonna lie and uh, I was gonna say shortly, um, after your age, you know, but it's not really true. It, it came like in my 30s and far too late because I was just not a very good student and I became a far better student uh, later on. Um, is that you read things that have to do with philosophy um, that are beyond, that you have to struggle to understand. And um that will better you as a human being better your intellect um watch movies that aren't just mindless entertainment but things that make you think um and look at artwork with that intention like is this artwork look like it was done by an intelligent mind or is it just like another piece of eye candy bling garbage you know, whatever. 
and see how your mind parses that, like figures that out. See what seems like it's noble and sincere to you and something uh, that you would like to explore and investigate further. Um, I started having questions about like, so I had this question when I was your age. Um, maybe some of you had these questions. All right, so we're all familiar with like religion and God and this kind of thing. I wondered about mythology. And shortly after that, I came across Joseph Campbell. I started reading um, his books and exploring that. That opened up a whole world to me of imagery and ideas that were worth pursuing. Um, OK, has that for an answer? That was super. So I have one last question here on the list. And boy, what a, what a good one to finish up with. Um, so Sammy asks, if you could give any advice to a young or start starting artist, what would you tell them? Okay, and and uh, am I right by looking at the clock and saying that we have like about two minutes and fifty seven seconds on the clock? That's about right. <laughs> All right. So my my pearly words of wisdom uh, par down to two minutes. Um, what advice would I give a young artist? And what's the end of that question? Um, that's what, it. Tell them. That's that's the question, right? That's the question. Yes, it is. Well, so you know, you might sum it up by by uh, saying everything that we're talking about, like in in this thing. Um, make time for yourself. Get a sketchbook. Be diligent about being part of finding yourself as a human being. Is is being committed to a task. So commit to your life as though. You really think it's worthwhile living, like you're, you know, you, you know how to get an A in 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 any given subject. You've been doing this for a while since you've been in kindergarten. You do an assignment, you get an assignment, you do it, and and if you know, sometimes you've goofed off and it hasn't been so good, and and you know, you've gotten a poor grade, and sometimes you've really sunk your teeth into the assignment, and and you're like, I'm gonna ace this thing. And you do, and it comes out wonderful, wonderfully. So I'm going to suggest um, that you might consider doing that for your life as an artist. That you go, I'm going to get an A on this. You know, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to crack this code, uh, and I'm going to throw every single thing that I have in, and uh, that I have in this, you know. The potential of my being in my brain, I'm going to get an A plus at this. I'm going to do the most honest work. Uh, I'm going to spend time in my sketchbook. I'm going to write ideas. I'm going to research this. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to uh, whatever it, you know. Like when you have to get your A uh, in an assignment, you have to go to the library or look stuff up on the internet. You have to, you know, I don't know if you interview people, but you know, reading books is a form of of interview. So. So that's my answer to that. Um, you know, treat it seriously. Treat it seriously as if your life depended on it. And uh, certainly, you know, you have this compelling force within you that wants to make itself out. It wants to for you to identify yourself as an artist. So if you don't take that seriously, Maybe you'll end up as a greeter at Walmart or, you know, some other thing. And maybe that's not so bad, but uh, maybe that's not. Say this, if you don't take it seriously, the world will find a different place for you. And it might not utilize your full potential as a human being. And that might end up getting you kind of depressed, make you a bad person, a bad uh, lover, wife um whatever um that might not be a good way to live life so maybe dig in and go go at it with everything you have because that might be a good way of living life so here we go <laughs> dorian thank you so very much uh for uh spending your afternoon with us and sharing all of this showing us all your wonderful work we really appreciate it Thanks oh again. good good Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. You're Thank you. Thank you. Great.
Great, thanks. Thank you so much. You got it.